I'm going to split this tutorial up into three parts, but it should be pretty short. First is going to be the player controller script, so getting our ball rolling around. The second is going to be sort of the attributes that we apply to all the objects in the scene that we want to be able to stick to. And then the third is going to be a camera setup with Cinemachine so we can keep our Katamari in the center of the screen at all times. So with our Unity project now booted up, we're going to go ahead and make a new scene because we don't want the template scene. So we'll go to our scenes folder, let's right click, create scene, and we'll just call it Katamari. Okay, so I'm going to be going at like my normal speed for, for how fast I develop stuff. Feel free to pause the video at any point and slow it down if you need to, to see what's happening, but I'll be talking through everything that I do. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and make a new plane as sort of the play field for our gameplay. In the materials folder, I'll make a new material called checker. In the base map, we'll go ahead and assign it to this default checker that comes built in with Unity. Drag that on there and just set the tiling to like 10 by 10 so we have a nice checkerboard. And I'll want the map to be a little bit bigger than this, so we'll just copy these with Control D to duplicate a couple times like that one more time so it's a nice three by three grid of planes cool so now we're going to work on our player i'm going to go ahead and make a new object that's just a sphere and this little guy is our player so i'll rename him to player and we'll make a new script called ball controller and i like to put my most important ones at the top just so i can see it pretty easily and then this object will also need one other component called a rigid body. And the rigid body and the sphere collider in combination will make unity physics happen on the sphere. So if I like drag it up now, let's rotate the camera to aim at it, and I hit play, the ball will fall down. Cool. So now we need to add input so we can actually make the ball roll around when we press buttons. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on my ball controller to open that up in VS Code. The first thing that we'll need is a reference to our rigid body so that we can control that from within this script. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a tag here for the property or for the variable called serialize field. We'll add a private rigid body and we'll just call that uh, RB. 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 Okay, now that that's set up, we want to capture the input of the player. So we're gonna be doing this in our update. Like it says, well, like it says here, update is called once per frame. So every frame that the game runs for, all code within these brackets is going to be run. So for our player input, I want to make a new vector three variable. It's like a temporary variable, and we'll just call it input. And we're going to get a new vector three that we will build out of a couple of different components. So the first one we want is input dot get axis dot get axis horizontal this is a default input so you don't need to set anything up this will just work out of the box uh, and horizontal is your like a and d keys your left and right arrow keys and pushing your thumbstick left and right on a controller so horizontal then on the y-axis we want zero because our ball is not moving up and down unless it happens by like rolling up a hill and then finally for our z-axis we'll do another input.getAxis, but this time we'll get the vertical axis, which is W and S, up and down key, forward and backwards. So now every frame, we are storing our input in a vector three called input. I'm just gonna go ahead and add a line rb.addForce. So this applies a force to our rigid body. The force is going to be input times, and then we'll make a new variable up here at the top. We'll serialize that. It'll be a private float called roll speed. And we can say input times roll speed times. And actually, since we're adding force, we're going to want to multiply this by time.fixed delta time. This is the interval in seconds at which physics and other fixed frame rate updates. So we'll, we're going to want to change this function to fixed update because that is the interval in which physics runs. So there's like two thingies happening in unity one is update that happens every frame one is fixed update that happens every like physics tick which runs asynchronously so add force and we can just end the line right there 
just right off the bat, this is gonna get our input. We'll multiply it by the roll speed and the time in between like the fixed updates. And that will cause our ball to move. So let's head back in the scene here. Let this compile. We're gonna to wanna to assign our rigid body. So we can just drag rigid body into there. And then roll speed, if it's zero, right? Anything multiplied by zero is zero, so it won't move at all. So we'll put that at like, I don't know, three. So keep in mind, the camera is not going to move. The ball is only going to move based on my button presses now. So there he is. I'm going to go ahead and hit W. And <laughs> we can see our ball slowly rolling. First thing to note is that's not fast enough. We'll try like 10 maybe. And the other thing to note is we're going to want the player movement to be dependent on the camera angle. So if we're like looking in a certain direction and we hit W, that should be forwards. Whereas right now how we have it is this is like uh, the global Z axis that we're moving along. So it's always gonna move along Z, which is this one, the blue arrow, right? Regardless of which way the camera's facing. So if, I, if I'm like looking at the ball here and I hit W, it's gonna go like this, which we don't want. We would want it to move along the X axis. So how do we fix this? We're gonna want a reference to our camera so we can get the cameras uh, so we can get the direction that the camera is looking uh, and we can adjust from there. So I'm going to go ahead and serialize a field. We're going to make a reference to a transform. Transform just stores uh, position, rotation, and scale for a game object. So we'll have a private transform called camera transform. Now, I'm going to make a, go ahead and make another vector three. We'll call this movement. And I basically want to build this off of our direction. So how I think about this is we want the Z of the input, which is our vertical, to line up with the forward of our camera. So I just do input.z. That'll be like the magnitude of our input multiplied by the direction of the camera, which is camera transform dot forward. And then plus, basically what we're doing here is just building a new vector. Plus input.x times camera transform dot right. Because on like an xy, ready? On an xy graph, this is bigger x, bigger x goes that way. So that's right. Okay, so now our input will, we're storing our button presses. We're calculating movement, and then finally we need to replace input here with movement, so we're getting our adjusted direction. Okay, so now we should have a ball that rolls around based on where our camera is facing. We can go ahead and test this. If I hit W here, it should roll away from the camera. And what did we do wrong? We didn't assign the camera transform. So I'll just drag that on there. So I hold W and it's rolling completely away from the camera, even though these rotations seem to be changing kind of nonsensically, it's actually just going in the forward camera direction. So now you can roll around as a ball, but how do you get things to stick to you? We're gonna do this using another built-in method called onCollisionEnter, which for some reason VS Code is not auto-correcting, so I'm just gonna Google onCollisionEnter and copy it from here. So it's void auto on collision enter, and then it takes in a collision. And this is not what we want to do. Right, so on collision enter. This gets called every time, you guessed it, our ball enters a collision. So what we want to do in this scenario is if the collision, we want to reference to the object that we collided with, so that's collision.game object. And we're going to go ahead and see if the tag, by using compare tag, is let's say prop that's what we'll call our tag prop so uh if this is prop open brackets we want it to stick to us so how we're going to do that is setting the parent of the object that we hit to ourselves parenting is like when this stuff happens hold on when a, an object is like a child of another object this is parenting so if i move this plane now its child inherits its 
position, rotation, and scale. So we want the object that we collided with, we want to set its parent to this transform, or in other words, we could just say transform. And do we need to do anything else? Yeah, so in Katamari, when you roll over something and it's smaller than your size, basically like the ball rolls, it starts to accumulate small stuff and it sort of grows in radius and it can start picking up stuff that's sort of around its size. So we're gonna make a new variable here that we're just gonna store as a private integer called size and we'll start it at zero. And we, what we wanna check here is, I'm just gonna use Unity's scale as our means of checking stuff's size. I'll explain what I mean by that. So if we had an object that has the prop tag and the object that we hit, if it's local scale dot magnitude, so and the magnitude of the scale is less than or equal to our current size, then we do that and we, then we add to size plus equals collision dot transform dot local scale dot magnitude and this will need to be a float actually right okay so if we hit something and the magnitude of its scale is less than our size then we will absorb it by parenting that object to ourselves and increasing our size based on the magnitude of the scale of that object and i'm trying to think if this is going to work i can't see why it wouldn't next step here is prop setup I wanna go ahead and make some props. I'm just gonna be using cubes for this demo just cause that's easy and everyone can do it. And let's make a new material. How about red? We'll just make a red material and we'll put that on the box. So we'll be eating red cubes. So remember that scale, that local scale variable that we were checking here, that is this right here. So I can basically scale these and this is what is gonna get added to the size in our player. So let's say like 0.35, that's fine. And then I wanna add a new tag to it, add tag. We're gonna go ahead and make a new one because we haven't made this tag yet. And what did we call it? Prop. So we'll make a new tag called prop. So it's like cube, tag, prop. So now when the ball hits the cube, on collision enter, it's gonna get called. This should pass because it's prop. This should pass, uh, no, this won't pass because 0.3 is not less than zero. So let's start our size at one to avoid that problem, right? And then we should inherit that cube. So I can just even spam a bunch of these around and we're gonna go ahead and play and see if we can pick up any objects. So I'm gonna go for the one closest to the camera here. Maybe. Hey, so it did stick to us. Now it seems like we're just too heavy to move. The ball was having trouble moving at all. So what I'm gonna do, make these cubes even smaller. We'll start them at like 0.1. Yeah, and just be like little pellets that you pick up so they don't interfere with your ability to roll that much. And then we'll increase our roll speed, get out of debug view to like 30. And we can crack out part three of the tutorial here too by installing Cinemachine. So we'll go to our package manager, we'll go to the Unity registry because it's a Unity asset. Click on Cinemachine, click install, super cool. Now we have a little bit of setup, but you'll be learning how to set up a Cinemachine project too. So that's cool. So click on your camera and the core of a Cinemachine system is called the Cinemachine Brain. This is like the brain of the cinnamon machine. So you're gonna give him a brain, like the scarecrow. Is it the tin man? No, he wants a heart. No, that's a lion. Okay, I don't know. He's got a brain now, but that's not where you define the behavior of the camera. What we wanna do is make another object. We'll call this our virtual camera, and we'll add a component called the cinemachine virtual camera. And this is the asset that actually takes in stuff to look at, and it defines the complex behaviors that Cinemachine has. So camera, we can see here, follow and look at. Let's go ahead and follow our player. And nothing's happening because we haven't told it what to do. So in body where it says do nothing, we have a bunch of options here for how this camera is going to try and follow our player. So third person follow tries to do like an over the shoulder kind of thing, which is why there's like shoulder offset. That's kind of weird for this. Uh, framing transposer, if we open the game window guides here, it like tries to keep it in frame at all times, which I think is probably fine for this. So let's keep it there. Camera distance we can mess with. 
other stuff like that. But I just want to try this to start with. So let's go ahead and put our game back here. Disable those guides. Okay, our ball should be faster now and our camera should follow us. So the camera's following, very cool. And let's grab this pellet here. Okay, <laughs> no depth perception. There we go, we got him. I'm gonna need a little bit more force still. Let's go like 50 for the roll speed. And then we can just go crazy with the cubes here now that we know all this works. I'm just gonna spam a bunch of these. I'll just do like this. There we go, nice. I just need enough, uh, when I stack them on top of each other, it becomes problematic. So one thing we can do to alleviate this a little bit is actually multiply everything in our add force by the size too. So the more we pick up, the faster we're actually going. Now there's no guarantees that this will scale well, so I might get going like too fast. Yeah. So this works really well. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just make some cubes. We'll just grab like a bunch of cubes here. Bop. So what if we made some that were just like big? Oh, it's all clustering on the same spot. There we go. We gotta even ourselves out a bit. There we go. Getting some good speed going. Okay. So that is how you make Katamari <laughs> in Unity. That is the basic idea. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys for some Unity beginners. Let me know what you want me to make next in the comments below. All right, peace.